Hello and welcome to our uh, webinar on understanding HIPAA compliance requirements for business associates. And uh, this has been an interesting subject actually, and uh, I appreciate all all of you to have uh, come for this webinar and taken out time from the schedules, especially uh, in a this is literally the peak working times. So thank you again for being there, and um, I'll try and make this as much as worth your while. And thank you again for uh, participating and, and be um, if there is any issues in the volumes or in the audio or something uh, please to drop a line and and my team is there to help sort this out uh, at the earliest that is anyway moving ahead so the topics covered today is what has been uh, given to you in the invite that is uh, what is a business associate or who is a business associate and um, you know of course I'll be starting off with a base on HIPAA and what is a business associate uh, agreement and how does HIPAA rules apply to a business associate and compliance requirements for business associates and what happens when you fail to comply so again uh, so this is going to be very very interesting and um, you know in case you're wondering uh, how come a topic on you know business associates for uh, HIPAA and what about covered entities or subcontractors and stuff so um, as you if you've attended our webinars in the past uh, we always have uh, in you know towards the end there's a survey and you can put in your topic uh, for what you would like to be covered in our webinars and we've been doing this for like five years now and we always have interesting subjects that we take up in our webinars so most of the time it is people like yourself who have uh, recommended topics that you want to take and this is one of the most uh, you know requested topic so here we are with it so thank you again uh, so again uh, in case you, have, uh, you are attending and you need cp points uh, please to attend the webinar and you get one cp and uh, but you need to attend this till the end so that in case there is a query we can respond to it and just to be clear we don't issue any certificates because there are just too many people attending and uh, you know we can't really issue certificates to everyone it takes up a lot more time and effort on this so but you can retain it and we are retaining your participation you can always submit it online when you are giving the entries for the cpe and in case there is an audit or a query on that they can write to us and we'll respond likewise all right so going ahead and of course our youtube channel on the internet and um, you can look it up and it's uh, the number one channel for compliance resources on PCI DSS, HIPAA, GDPR, SOC 1, SOC 2, ethical hacking. We have more than 2,500 subscribers and uh, you know, uh, you should go to that. You can just search in YouTube with time for sec and uh, you can sign into our official channel and do subscribe and click on the bell icon. Don't do half work, just click on the bell icon so you can uh, then uh, get updates because almost every week we issue a new video. All right, so as you go along, do type in your queries in the query box and uh, I'll take it up, you know, uh, in life mode. And there are many a time there are just too many queries. And uh, so I'm not able to take it up immediately. So in that case, I will definitely write to you back. All right, so going ahead, as a company, just this is a brief, we are there across the world. We are there in US, Canada, UK, India, Singapore, and we are as a company only into cybersecurity and um, you know multiple services that we do like PCI DSS, HIPAA, HIPAA, GDPR, CCPA, VDPA, many things we do. We don't sell any products, no hardware, no software, purely into audits and compliance areas. Uh, okay, that's about me. I've been like, um, this is me. Okay, most of you, uh, okay, let me check the attendees. Okay, quite a few of clients are there. All right, so um you know i've been there for almost 30 years now um more than 25 rather actually and uh, 28 something i guess as i remember anyway and so for the past 16 17 years i've been running my company with time for sec and we are primarily into um services uh you know like um hipaa gdpr soc 1 soc 2 pci dss and stuff anyway so jumping directly into the content these are some acronyms that we will be using so uh, ensure that you are aware of this so that you know you're not wondering what does this mean so PHI would be protected health information this is, is like a uh, definition from uh, HIPAA in itself and the CE covered entities BA is business associate as I'll be taking and then there's some, something called as a BAA 
business associate agreement and so this is the agreement that you sign with the business associate and there's office of civil rights and of course health and human services hhs so these are various departments in the hip hop terminologies or the law uh, quadrants as you can say uh, uh, moving ahead all right so uh, a brief a brief uh, background to hipaa and what it means and what it carries with it so so the delivery of healthcare is a complex and diverse and over the years there has been a few issues also with it and um, many a time third parties need to uh, to access the healthcare and need to perform functions or services for healthcare entities like um, we have a few clients who are into um, you know helping out companies or organizations in or hospitals for that matter into managing patient information or they are just hosting the online platforms which are used by hospitals for uh, you know managing the the client the patient information by insurance providers to keep track of the various uh, you know um, insurance claims by or by third party agents tpas and insurance agreements in by uh, by uh, organizations so even these service providers have been a client so these are the third parties that need to access and many a time uh, those organizations are uh, um, you know form as a conduit for breach of very sensitive confidential um, you know healthcare information so that's where uh, hipaa health insurance portability and accountability act were was devised so um now historically it's been regulated uh, regulated business associates by requiring covered entities to manage them through contractual uh, relationships so this is the antecedent to a webinar so um, the covered entities are the directly like the hospitals and the insurance uh, agencies organizations are the covered entities and then there are business associates that work with the uh, covered entities and of course okay uh if you need some more background to hipaa and some more base information on hipaa do visit our youtube channel and what can happen is uh once you visit the channel there is a entire playlist on uh, hipaa um go there and you will see uh, you know quite a bit of information quite a bit of webinars uh, uh, covered from the hipaa perspective and uh, you can go through it and that will give you some background to hipaa so that said okay i've got lucy asking for the link all right no no worries ask and you shall receive and for the sake of everyone that's our youtube channel you go there you go to uh, the playlist for hipaa and there are lots more videos you can visit our website um i've put in my website link also you can go there and uh, you can go into blog there is an entire section on hipaa and there is more than a dozen articles that you have purchased uh, that were published on our blog and various uh, you know uh, uh, international magazines which you'll find the links over there so they they'll cover a lot of basics and even intricate topics on hipaa anyway so coming back to the topic so in 2009 congress uh, made business associate directly accountable to regulators for compliance right so earlier it was uh, the congress had only mandated covered entities and it had made their problem to manage the, their business associates but from 2009 onwards congress made business associate directly accountable to the regulators where earlier it was not so uh, and these changes and then more updates were done to the hipaa regulation they are finalized by 2013 right and uh, all right one sec somebody again asked me for my website uh, one sec All right, that's my company website again. So I hope this helps. Anyway, moving ahead. Okay, so then um, just to give a background on this, again, HIPAA was uh, formulated in 1996. So it has been a very very long journey for HIPAA, right? So it was regulated. The, the compliance was regulated by the Department of Health and Human Services (HHS) and then enforced by the OCR, Office of Civil Rights. This is a background to it. 
Okay, and one sec. All right. So HIPAA compliance requires business associates to uh, and covered entities to follow set rules that are intended to protect and uh, secure protected health information. And so again, um, there is a definition for what is covered under uh, health information and what is not. And there is a provision for anonymized, um, you know, or masked health information that is not covered under the purview. But as I said, I cannot get into the basics of HIPAA at this time. I really encourage you to visit our YouTube and then get into the playlist of HIPAA and there are some basic, uh, you know, introductory topic also over there. So again, the, this regulatory requirement was introduced to protect the privacy, security, and integrity of protected health information. Um, now, <clears throat> not every organization is subject to HIPAA regulation. So there is some requirement in the sense that uh, uh, no matter, uh, you know, if you are if you are in touch with uh, anonymized information or you are, um, you know, directly not getting access to patient personal, you know, uh, health information. So in that case, there, 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 this cannot be applicable to you. This law is not applicable to you. This regulation is not applicable to you. And also not all HIPAA rules apply to every uh, organization. So it could be that, uh, you know, there are, you, you are some, some requirements are simply not applicable to you. Like any, any standard, with, whether it is PCI or SOC1 or SOC2 or even ISO for that matter, there are, uh, you know, based on your business, um, you know, business process, there could be some, uh, you know requirements which are not applicable to you so you need uh, to have a proper review of your systems to uh, confirm as to what is applicable to you and what is not applicable to you all right so uh, for example in, in some cases you might not directly be able to access uh, you know uh, mm -mm, the health information so we have some clients wherein what they're doing is they are directly logging on to the client information to the client uh, location like the hospitals and insurance agencies and then processing the information over there nothing comes back to them like there is we have clients where literally nothing no uh, client information or health information enters their premises so uh, in that case you know um, protecting or you know stored healthcare information simply doesn't apply to them right so in that case only the the, the transmission part or uh, protecting information in transit might apply to them but data in dim as it is called data in motion might uh, might be applicable to them and data at rest which is stored information would not directly be applicable to them so this is just an idea of some regulation which might not be applicable to everyone so based on your business processes uh, you know it could be that um, more strict or lesser strict rules are applied applied to you based on your roles and responsibilities right so um, as per hipaa as per the hhs uh, health and human services hipaa is applicable to everyone whether you are a covered entity or a business associate or a subcontractor business associate all it is applied to everyone right so there are no exceptions to it. wherever it goes it's applicable right so um, okay now who needs to comply with health information so these are just some examples so uh, healthcare providers including doctors clinics hospitals psychologists chiropractors nursing home pharmacists dentists so uh, even the small doctors having uh, small practices hipaa is uh, applicable to them so it is um, see from the beginning of this webinar i've only been speaking about hospitals and insurance agencies um, so it's not just only and only them it doesn't mean that only it is applicable to them anywhere where uh, patient information um, is traveling or is there they are uh, hipaa is applicable to them right and even the health health plans it could be health insurance companies hmos company health plan providers government programs such as medicaid medicaid everyone it is applied and the last category is where the the bulk of uh, you know HIPAA applicability comes because all these hospitals and insurance agencies or even for that matter healthcare providers have have numerous hundreds and upon hundreds of third party service providers like billing service providers repricing companies community health uh, uh, you know management providers information system providers value added healthcare services telecommunication providers transcription like um you know 
I, I remember when this outsourcing boom happened in the you know early 2000s from that time you know um late 90s early 2000s and the one of the first things that it, that is that, that it happened at that time from that time itself was the medical transcription so doctors were uh, you know their their the prescriptions were scanned and sent and there would be some agencies in an you know, organization sitting in countries like india or philippines and other countries where they would be sitting and basically be transcribing those information that is scribbled on notes into uh, you know the systems online so even those come under it right uh, oh, shit. oh man okay sorry melissa and uh, okay i think i've stopped my for some reason my my slides are frozen I'm sorry about that. When okay, is it just uh, from getting getting back to the slide uh, to the slides perspective? All right. So um, okay, this is what I covered. I'm sorry about this. Okay, this is what who needs to comply with the healthcare providers, and uh, this is what was being shown online. I'm sorry again. My for some reason my slides are frozen but there it is so thanks for flagging it and do keep me posted in case you are uh, facing any issues in seeing the content all right uh, so thanks again and so okay who needs to comply with HIPAA that you can see and now coming to the core as to who is a business associate like we had seen earlier that there was uh, the you know the business associate and what is a business associate so a business associate is a uh, individual or an organization please pay attention to this it can e even be an individual having maybe one or two uh, you know companies in the back end and they are providing some information or maybe a single person also providing some information or some uh, support to a covered entity and perform certain activities on their behalf and involves them in accessing the uh, PHI which is for processing storing of disclosed protected health information (PHI), the full form protected health information. So um, it can even be seen as I've given in my previous slide, the healthcare clearing houses or organizations which is, which is providing back-end support to the healthcare providers or health can health plan health plan providers. So a third-party service provider is considered as a HIPAA a business associate only when it gets PHI for a service that's providing to the covered entity okay so any and all what i'm trying to say my friends is that any and all third party service providers are not considered as a hipaa business associate all right so it is not that anybody and everybody who's maybe providing say catering information uh, catering services or maybe um, you know desktop support services or a, any of those type of or we, uh, maybe supplying some hardware or software to organizations or maybe doing some software development for organizations without uh, to a covered entity like a hospital or an insurance provider with no direct access to the information uh, they 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 uh, so a, any and all third party providers of covered entities do not fall into the category of a business associate unless they have access to phi right uh, and this is a third part the this is uh, actually what you've done is that you've taken up many of those faqs or those questions that you get from our clients so all those people who are working at uh, those hospitals and chiropractor clinics or uh, doctor clinics or insurance providers they are not a business associate so a third party service provider who has access to phi is called as a business associate okay so uh, since business associates use phi uh, just like a covered entity they too are required to come to comply with many of the outlined hipaa requirements so hipaa also sets a standard for how phi should be kept private and secure um, you know within the healthcare industry and even by the third party service providers so uh, i hope you are getting just to summarize this a, a business associate uh, is a third party service provider who has access to the PHI for a service that it is providing to the peer to the covered entity, right? So um, 
now since it will have the same information that the covered entity has access to so hipaa requirements that is required to be done by the covered entity are required to be covered done now by a business associate also right and these are some examples of business associates so uh, you can you can see the listing there is uh, medical billing companies law offices accounting firms shredding services it vendors health insurance companies medical transcription companies collection agencies it consultants anyone right so um, what do i mean by uh, let me give an an, an obvious uh, an example for example a few of our clients you know what they're doing they are they are providing a very valuable service that is they are to these hospitals and even to you know insurance companies they are they are providing uh, you know server support services desktop uh, support services or patching services or incident management services or database management services so um, they do not directly have access to the card or to the uh, you know uh, to the PHI protected health information they are providing all these services remotely and they don't have access to the database also but because they are providing a critical service that can impact the security of a covered entity's um, you know environment they are also required to be coming they are also called as a business associate and they need to comply with the HIPAA requirements all right so um, now coming coming to the next thing, a subcontractor business associate. So what happens is a covered entity is like all those, um, you know, medical service providers, doctors, physicians, chiropractors, psychologists, or whatever, and on of course hospitals and insurance agencies, third party, uh, you know, um, sorry, TPA, third party agencies for the the insurance providers, all those companies. So they have service providers called as business associates. Now those business associates might further delegate some activity to an outside agency it could be simply like you know managing their infrastructure or maybe outsourcing a part of that activity that it is supposed to be providing to the covered entity to further down chain right so th that's a subcontractor business associate so just as a business associate subcontractors too have to comply with the same hipaa requirements right so just as a business associate is expected to assign a baa that is a business associate agreement with the business covered entities in the same way the 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 down the chain the third level second fourth level or whatever business associate subcontractors are also expected to sign a baa with their business associate right so <clears throat> many a time a business associate uh, for some covered entity can be a business associate and for some other com cover as uh, uh, covered entity uh, can be a subcontractor business associate because there is someone else above him or upstream right so some examples of business associate subcontractors are ac accountants attorneys email encryption providers file sharing vendors shredding companies it vendors so it depends where in the chain are you it can be the same services that a business associated is providing but if you're one level down the line you're a subcontractor right so there's not a, you know so the same thing as we had seen earlier there cannot be a, a, you know it could be a, if i take it in this way that a backup storage vendor if a backup storage vendor is directly providing a service to the covered entity he uh, that organization will be a business associate but if now this organization is providing to a business associate of a covered entity then that organization becomes a subcontracted business associate okay so how does hipaa rules apply to business associates so by the law the primary the hipaa privacy rule applies only to the covered entities but since most of the healthcare providers and health plan providers outsource their their functions to a third party now uh, you know it is this privacy rule allows the covered entity to disclose to the business associate that is the outsourced vendors but then there has to be some sort of an assurance that the business associate is uh, you know giving or treating that data with the same level of seriousness if not more that is provided by the covered entity 
So the currently the HIPAA's privacy rule, security rule, beast notification rules are applicable to everyone. That is a covered entity and the business associate. So here is now we look at the breakdown for each HIPAA rule for the business associate. These are a few things. Uh, this is like a mine of information. I cannot get into each one of them. But this gives you an idea about what rules apply, how what uh, you know HIPAA rules apply to business associates also. All right. Uh, so the HIPAA security uh, so security rule applies to both business uh, covered entities and business associates. Now this includes everything, right? The administrative, technical, physical safeguards, everything applies to the covered entities and business associates. Privacy rule, there is some, uh, you know, uh, exceptions over here. Now, privacy rules, except for a few mentioned in the security rule, uh, it's, it's not fully applicable to a business associate. So a covered entity might say, um, see, let, let me give an example. So the, the, the collection mechanisms and managing or, or ensuring that the, data is fully complete and error free and all those things might not be the role of the business associate but is expected to be done by the covered entity but what is going to be the ruling provision over here will be the agreement that is shared between the covered entity and the business associate wherein the covered entity makes clear what is the roles and responsibility of the business associate now my friends this is a two-edged sword, right? So I give this as a, a note of a warning to both the covered entities and the business associate to be very careful what is required to be done as a roles and responsibility. You can have a good RACI, RACI chart, wherein you identify what will be the roles and responsibilities of a covered entity or the business associate. Let there be no open-ended uh, provisions or requirements. Be very clear because if it is not clear um, you know it will be like a ping pong thing in case something goes wrong and in more cases than not it could be the covered entity's responsibility to have not clarified very clearly to the business associate what are the requirements right so if you're a covered entity be extra careful because if you're not specifying the rules very clearly to a business associate you will not be able to uh, you know defend yourself in case unfortunately god forbid there is a request there is an issue or a breach similarly uh, if you're a business associate be very careful on what has been written in the business associate agreement in case it is much more an overbearing so in that case you might end up taking more risk than you have actually signed for it could be that there could be some provisions that the covered entity is doing but has put up still some responsibility on your head so be very clear on the privacy provisions that is being expected from you. So privacy rule would even apply in case the business associate has a subcontractor and another subcontractor below it. So the longer the chain, the privacy rule from the covered entity should be the, uh, the, the benchmark uh you know of what is required from a baa and the subcontractor business associate agreement that is signed up down the chain now breach notification that uh you know under this hipaa uh, requires that hipaa covered entities should ensure that the business associate complies with the breach notification rule now in as per the omnibus rules, I will, there is a slide on this going ahead. Uh, the business associate has to report to the covered entity of any sort of breach. It has to be done within 60 days of when you became aware or knew or should have known about the breach. So uh, you cannot say, oh, there was an alert coming, but I never saw it. That's not going to fly. So within 60 days, which is a very big time actually, for you to even ensure that things are uh, actually a breach and not really a false alarm. And the notice must include all the details the covered entity needs for breach reporting. And as per the agreement, be the, the business associate may require expiriting notice or more direct involvement in the breach response. 
so don't wait for 60 days in that sense right and the sooner you report it the better it is for you it shows due diligence on your behalf now since i mentioned the omnibus rules which is like an overarching uh, requirement uh, the o omnibus rules was basically passed to strengthen the protection of the phi especially in electronic form as well as give patients more access to the health information now this rule omnibus rule was basically passed to ensure that you know earlier the only people whose whose head was there on the guillotine was the covered entity right and whose head was on the line but now with the omnibus amendment being done to hipaa even the business associate and their subcontractors and their subcontractors all are directly liable to the human um, you know health and human services department to the office of civil rights for any negligence or issues so it is not just a covered entity but the entire chain comes in question so some of the privacy rules and security now apply directly to the business associate instead of going via the uh, you know the covered entity so um, this is a note of warning again that i can give to the business associate and the subcontractors so let not the you know just look at the covered entity what has been written in the agreement or the business associate agreement that we have there are some requirements that is applicable directly to you so in case there are something that is the covered entity has not written in your in the agreement but it it is directly mentioned for you as per the hipaa regulation then you better be doing it you cannot say it was not documented so i didn't do it right so ensure that a good review is done of your processes as as per the entire hipaa security rule privacy rule breach notification rules and within that the administrative technical physical safeguards everything all right so um omnibus as you know that, that's a great statement omnibus rule legitimately enforces this requirement upon business associate beyond simply signing a business associate agreement right so by with this the 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 business associates and their contractors can be directly be fined penalized audited by the dhs and the hhs that is health and human services department of health and human services so in, uh, without without going through the covered entities right so it is not just the covered entities on the line now everybody is responsible so what is a business associate agreement it's a contract between the health uh, hipaa covered entities and their business associates or subcontractor which outlines the type of phi being released to the business associate and the permitted users uh, and disclosures of phi by the business associate so hipaa also permits covered entities to di disclose phi only to help the covered entity carry out the business so all the data that is shared is has to be on a need to know now the disclosure of phi is permissible only under a signed baa contract so without a baa contract a covered entity is not allowed to sign to uh, you know share any information with any sort of <coughs> uh, associates or contractors so in this agreement all the um, the roles and responsibilities obligations uh, uh, what can be done with the data what is being disclosed how the data should be secured everything should be covered in this and hipaa requires that covered entities only and only work with those organizations or business associates with whom they have signed an arrangement right without a contract a covered entity without a business associate agreement a covered entity is not allowed legally it's illegal to work with a business associate now again with the hipaa omnibus rule this uh, requirements extend to the business associates also so now business associates cannot have uh, you know subcontractors without an agreement in place so with the omnibus rule the 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 OCR, that is the Office of Civil Rights, could directly audit the business associates for non-compliance and directly catch their neck in case they have worked with subcontractors without an agreement in place or without um, taking into account the provisions of the uh, BA that they have signed that they have signed with the covered entity. 
So um, the HHS, the Health and Human Services on its website is very clear. The, the privacy rule, this is what is written. That the privacy rules require that a covered entity obtain security satisfactory assurances from its business associate that the business associate will appropriately safeguard the PHI it receives on or creates on behalf of the covered entity. All this thing has to, to be in writing in the form of a contract or agreement between the covered entity and the business associate. Now, this thing has to be fairly exhaustive and uh, better you go in for some legal counseling or go in with some consulting organization which has got good background in formulating such agreements. And at the same time, the business associate should also be very clear as to what will happen in case they are failing to comply with the requirements of HIPAA. Is remember again, as per the omnibus rules, the OCR or the Office of Civil Rights can directly, uh, you know, catch, audit, penalize business associates directly without going to the covered entities. Now, again, for a covered entity without have, uh, having an agreement in place, they can, uh, they can be penalized. It is illegal, as I said earlier. So, um, <clears throat> let's assume you are a business associate, and uh, for some reason, okay, I'm just I'm making this obtuse thing. The covered entity, for some weird reason, has not signed the agreement with you. Does it mean that you are all scot-free and nothing will happen? Absolutely not. First of all, yes, the covered agreement, the covered entity will be in trouble, trouble from the OCR, Office of Civil Rights. But at the same time, you are expected to comply with the HIPAA security role even if there is no agreement in place. Even if there is a uh, violation, you will be held accountable, you will be held responsible, you will be penalized uh, by OCR, that is the Office of Civil Rights. Now, at the same time, if I turn the tables around, uh, you know, the covered entity, if, in case you sign an agreement with the business associate, doesn't mean you are scot free. And if anything happens, you can simply wave your hand and say, go talk to my business associate. They made a mess. No, you remember outsourcing, the key is that responsibility you might have given someone the responsibility of doing a task, but the accountability is still with you. The In case there is a breach, the OCR and the HHS can definitely ask you as to what has been your due care and diligence steps to ensure that you have, uh, you know, to ensure that your business associate is adhering to the requirement of the BAA. Right? How did you ensure that the business associate is supply HIPAA compliant prior to entering into an agreement? Like, uh, like this is so so interesting. Like uh, just a few days back, uh, I think no, two days back rather, we we had this call. Like, uh, you know, I I, I was uh, I got a call in the middle of the day rather, and there was this guy who was very you know desperately on the phone, um, you know wanted to sign up with us because he needed somebody to help them get their agreements in place check their compliance in place issue the audit report so that they can sign up uh, a large contract apparently with a healthcare provider so the covered entity has to check that your that their uh, that their providers are sufficiently hipaa compliant now, what should be included in the business associate agreement? It should be what is permitted of for use and disclosure. What can be done with the data limitation on use and disclosure? So in case they get into an agreement with a subcontractor, what can they do with the data? What can they disclose to outside entities or not? And then safe security and safety require uh, uh, safeguards for PHI. Uh, for the EPHI, uh, uh, EPHI would be E would be the electronic. So PHI could even, even be printouts, all right? So uh, report uh, how to report unauthorized use and disclosure, how to report security incidents, how the breach notification requirements. Like you may say that even though HIPAA requirements is for 60 days, I want you to report to me within say five days. That is your call. And the reports for copies of PHI in case there is an issue. 
whatever is there that is told with them and then uh, whether they are permitted to have subcontractors if there is a subcontractor the, what is allowed under subcontracting and accessing the limit and grants to the phi and then amendments to the phi what can they do as an amendment to the phi records to the secretaries that they have how to return or destroy the phi at termination of the contract and termination provisions then uh, um, you know the, the look at the fourth point right delegation of covered entities duties so if you are a covered entity and you are getting a ba in place so in that case what sort of duties of yours have you delegated to the ba to the ba the business associate that has to be very clear so the ba the business associate knows very clearly what it is getting into so non statutory provisions uh, often incorporated in the ba so that could be management and uh, administration requirements how the data ag aggregation is happening the insurance coverage like you might say as a covered entity that is uh, you need to have so and so much and so much insurance in place and of course the privacy laws and requirements because the privacy laws might not directly uh, the privacy rule might not fully apply to the business associate that's there and then of course the time frames and anything else that could be there it could be non disclosures it could be the skill sets of the people uh, who would be working on the data you might mandate some specific network architecture like you may say that uh, your business associates should set up a, a, a dedicated network zone for yourself uh, for your work or it could be you know maybe um, an air gap network or maybe you want them to use a specific type of a vpn or maybe two factors a specific type of encryption so all these are non statutory requirements that can get uh, incorporated in the baa uh, and then what could be the failure points for the baa you know business associate agreements first of all uh, you know we have seen this so many times that is covered entities assuming that since they have assigned a ba means that they, uh, and there is compliance in place now even if you are a covered entity or you are a business associate if you are uh, signing up for something for outsourcing down the line so if you're covered entity then cover then uh, associating with a ba or if you're a business associate then subcontracting it to a subcontracted ba business associate so in that case assuming that they are already hipaa compliant no you it's your responsibility to confirm and get the acknowledgement in writing that they have got HIPAA compliance in place. I would suggest you to ask them for their audit reports uh, for their compliance attestation by some good certifying, uh, not certifying because there is no HIPAA certification. Um, so some good uh, auditing agency who have done their compliance audits. So for example, we do it. So that way. Or failure to sign a BA with the subcontractors. Many a time it is like only the BA business associate and the covered entities have a good BA in place. But the subcontractors basically just have a master services agreement, which is not in line with the BA. Have you have seen this also? There is a the business associate has a subcontractor. Now the business associate has a covered entity also. So they the covered entity BA the the BA is very good. The business associate agreement is very sharp, very strong, very well written. But the agreement between the business associate and the subcontractor is very likely written, more like a formality types. And that's like asking for failure. Now, incomplete BA elements, it could be like all the provisions not covered, or maybe the template that is used is very more like a master services agreement overall types, you know. Uh, but not really uh, addressing the HIPAA requirements that we had seen earlier. So uh, this is something which is like a legal requirement. Don't take this lightly. Now, what happens when a business associate fails to comply with HIPAA? Now, business associate will be held liable, as we saw earlier, under the omnibus provisions. Now, because they have already signed a BA in place, even if not the as per omnibus requirements, they are they will be held liable. Now, as per the HHI HHS, that's the Health and Human Services website, it says that um, you know any sort of failure to comply uh, with the uh, uh, to, to provide the secretary with records and compliance requirements, um, you know, will be held uh, you, you know as a negligence. 
and then uh, it uh, it also authorizes the HHS and the OCR to take retaliatory uh, action against any individual or persons for filing a HIPAA complaint and then participating in an organization is uh, in a, or failure to comply with the requirements of the security rule or failure to be, provide breach notification or impermissible uses and disclosures of PHI for example cross use so for example if i am um, you know i am an insurance agency and i have the insurance information of my purse of some people i cannot use that information uh, so i'm a business associate and i'm also selling insurance and uh, or, or, you know i'm also selling say motor car insurance so i, I take the health information from some covered entity and uh, then i use that information to sell motor car insurance to those people so that is a cross use which is totally prohibited i'm just giving an example right or maybe using that information to sell some medication uh, to those uh, you know affected people of whose health information i have in place so it could be some oncological drugs or it could be some aids drugs or something like that uh, that i uh, that I try to sell to them directly or give them some you know some support on that or whatever that is like impermissible use and disclosure of PHI right so this is very very serious and the OCR really takes this in a very very serious manner so <clears throat> so there could be a failure to make reasonable effort to limit uh, the PHI to minimum necessary this is also considered as a breach then failure in, uh, to provide an accounting of disclosures like what di disclosures happened how many times it happened to whom it happened many a time not many a time a few times you've seen organizations even trying to hide uh, some sort of you know uh, breaches not trying to be to behave as if it never happened or any sort of failure to enter into business associate agreements with uh, with subcontractors that create or receive P phi on their behalf or failure to take reasonable steps to address a material breach or violation of the subcontractors uh, associate agreements that's where the hhs health and human services department can step in and take a retaliatory action penalize you even send you to jail or something i don't know all right so hipaa compliance challenge for business associates one is the ambiguity in understanding the applicability of hipaa obligation so um how do I say this? Okay, we have seen a few, um, you know, business associate agreements wherein the business associates are smaller companies and those uh, covered entities are large giants and they have written everything under the sun and put them accountable on the business associates. And many a time to get business, the business associate or the subcontractors simply sign the contract because those terms are open ended and no matter what happens, the covered entity can wrap it on your head. So this is really serious. It can actually result in you going bankrupt, uh, being sent to jail for if it is really serious. In case there is a breach, it can it can even be the, that's not really your fault, but it's there in the agreement as your responsibility, right? So challenge to comply and track multiple VA. So this is another thing. M many uh, business associates have multiple business associate agreement. This is a very serious issue, guys so we we have many clients who sign multiple bas across multiple clients and then they might have different provisions but the environment is the same how are you going to take care of it some clients might say that you need uh, two-factor authentication some clients might say it's not required some clients might say that you need to have open vpn for vpn access some clients might say use fortinet like someone might say we use aes256 someone might say no you use aes512 or 2048 or someone might say use asymmetric algorithms someone might say use symmetric algorithms for algorithms for uh, encryption of data so again the lack of reports uh, resources to uh, to support frequent audits because uh, covered entities and business associates are required to ensure down the line people uh, you know associates of theirs uh, business uh, partners of theirs down the line are complying with HIPAA requirements. So they might even do audits of their own. And then multiple subcontractor BAs and keeping an accurate count of subcontractor BAs because it's large uh, covered entities or even business associates 
have numerous dozens and dozens of subcontractors and business associates so keeping track of who's doing what where ensuring compliance so it's like a two-edged sword so um, i hope you can draw that mental picture on this so this is very serious where you know uh, keeping track of multiple baas with your upstream uh, covered entity and then keeping track of multiple b subcontracted baas downstream of you so all these things can be a major mess in compliance but that cannot be an excuse that you can give in case god forbid there is a breach so HIPAA compliance checklist for business associates number one business associate agreement with covered entities you need to have this in place a very clear agreement and then down the stream subcontractor ba as we saw now now implementing the safety safeguards security safeguards for phi and ephi having the right security policies and procedures doing a, a very effective objective security risk assessment doing an administrative assessment then implementing policies and processes to comply with the privacy rules uh, again depending on the agreements that you sign because not if you're a business associate not everything might apply to you in privacy now hipaa training for business associates is also very important as any standard it requires personnel to be trained then uh, process for reporting of security incidents and breaches and also if you need to have a process for reporting then you need to have an incident response plan in place then records and documentation of compliance evidences then policy and process relating to returning altering destroying or of phi and ephi this last this last point that is written i would like to maybe you know bring your mind to this we have seen many business associates where they don't have an, a good plan for data retention and disposal many a time and we have seen a few times where they don't have any sort of return and they say we just perpetually maintain it and the covered entities is fine but that's uh, remember this increases your exposure in case there is a breach then you will be required to justify as to why you are storing decade old payment information uh, sorry uh, patient information with you so have a good process in place for regular data retention scans and disposal then develop a very cohesive security and privacy policy as per hipaa requirement not just a generic one then have an internal audit process depending on the situation it could be quarterly some processes quarterly half yearly yearly whatever and document records for evidence because without evidence you just have a policy in place it's going to be meaningless then establish your incident response plan establish breach notification processes and again the establish a process for handling returning and destruction of phi very very important very important you need to even have evidence as to how did you get rid of the data Training and awareness program, and then last but not the least, hire a compliance consultant. This is very important because this is the law. This is a legal requirement. You might oversee something, or you might, um, you know, overestimate or even underestimate some requirements. All right, that brings me to the end. I really hope that this was uh, worthwhile for you, which went over slightly overboard with the time. And as we are entering, there is a survey participation request. You put in a lot of time and money in getting the, uh, these webinars out. Do take a few minutes to just will take you know, like 30 seconds to fill up that sheet to just you know make the tick marks. Do give us your feedback on what you think about the webinar, whether it met your expectations, and uh, whether you have any comments or suggestions for future um, you know webinars. And in case you're watching this on YouTube, do leave a nice comment uh on your experience um and of course thank you again for sharing your valuable time and that's our contact information do drop us line in case you have any further queries um, um okay i got um you know i got a nice query from urbane amuli what will be the best time to ask you a question about hipaa you should have asked so far my friend <laughs> you should have asked me and i would have answered you but but uh, yeah, about HIPAA or PCI, please. So what I would suggest, Urbain, is that I have messaged you my email address. Uh, yes, and what you can do is you can, uh, you know, drop me a line and I will respond to you directly. And uh, whatever your queries are, you should have asked me, my friend. I would have answered you. And that's what makes our webinar so interesting because people ask questions. Anyway, so thank you again and have a wonderful day ahead. Take care and God bless you. Bye-bye.